Okay. Hello everyone, uh, the speaker of today is Dr. Mark Goldman. Uh, Mark received his master's degree in 1970 at the Novosibirsk State University in uh, Russia and PhD in uh, 1974 at the Russian Academy of Sciences, Siberian branch. Uh, both degrees are in geophysics. Since his immigration to Israel in 1980 until 1914, sorry, until 2014, Mark served as a senior geophysicist and head of the geoelectric department at the Geophysical Institute of Israel. Currently, Mark is a research fellow in, the, in our department of marine geosciences at the University of Haifa. Uh, his research interests include the development and application of both on land and marine geoelectric and electromagnetic methods. Uh, Mark is a member of Society of Explorational Geophysics, Israel Geological Society, and uh, he is an edi associate editor of uh, Geophysical Prospecting and Near Surface uh, Geophysics. Yes. Thank you, Regina. <coughs> yeah, there will be not much contrast in the accent, so you probably already <laughs> get used. Uh, <coughs> good afternoon to everybody. And uh, uh, my talk is devoted to uh, some uh, quite new uh, marine electromagnetic methods. But uh, despite that, I would like to start with some uh, extended introduction about the principles of uh, the marine electromagnetic methods and about the existing uh, methods uh, because otherwise I, I don't think it will be clear why do we need to, to develop something new and as you will see these new methods are, are quite uh, cumbersome, quite expensive and uh, not so technological as uh, existing one. If we will not understand what are the problems in applying electromagnetic methods in marine environments. Uh, so probably uh, first five minutes uh, you will not hear something very very new. So excuse me, but I think that methodologically it is quite important that I start from uh, from uh, stuff. Okay, first of all, the uh, <coughs> uh, physical uh, uh, parameters, main physical parameters which is studied in uh, geoelectric and electromagnetic methods is uh, electrical resistivity or conductivity. And uh, to my mind, uh, uh, this uh, physical property very different from all other which uh, are studied in uh, all other uh, geophysical methods such as uh, density or uh, acoustic properties or magnetic properties. Uh, uh, and this is uh, some illustration. <coughs> uh, uh, these are resistivities as a function of depth, but these resistivities are measured uh, in the borehole. So from the Earth's surface, we never get such uh, resolution, of course. But anyway, what we can see that uh, um, here is the, uh, uh, the scale is logarithmic. So this is extremely high variation of, of resistivities. You don't have it in intensity, even, even not approaching to this and to some other parameters as well. And uh, they are very variable also uh, with depth and laterally. Why it is important? It is important in the stage of geological interpretation. So I'm not talking about how we get these resistivities at, at the moment. It is also uh, quite a complicated story because we are measuring uh, voids. And from voids to get resistivities, it's not very simple deal. But at the moment, let's suppose the best case scenario that we do have resisted distribution of resistivities with depths, but still, if we don't have any uh, additional or prior information, how can we distinguish this high resistivity belongs to the target? In this case, it is some uh, 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 oil or gas reservoir, I don't remember, from this resistivity. <laughs> They're the same, or this resistivity. So all high resistivities could be the target. So therefore, the uh, geological interpretation of geoelectrical data without additional information is quite non-unique, ambiguous. Uh, this is the first problem. The second problem, I already mentioned uh, the, uh, the resolution. So in the problem is okay, but what about from the surface? And here I 
and show you one of the examples of measurement, uh, physical measure from the surface. I, I don't even specify which uh, method, specific method, one of the control source and magnetic methods. But we can see that uh, the resolution toward the target, and here we have the response, uh, it is calculated for synthetic response uh, 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 on the background and uh, including the target. And we see that the difference is quite small. We are talking about a few tens of percent, so the resolution is, is quite low. Uh, <coughs> so this is the reason why uh, elect geoelectrical and electromagnetic method were very little applied for uh, the exploration of high resistive targets, especially for thin resistive targets. For example, hydrocarbon targets on land. In 100 years of the existence of uh, geoelectrical methods, we know only very few applications incomparable to the, to the seismic on land exploration. Uh, parts of percent, probably. The situation dramatically changed in 2001. Here I will emphasize this. Look, look at these numbers. In five years, starting from 2001, uh, the application of offshore electromagnetic methods increased by almost two orders of magnitude. It was real revolution. I, I don't, I cannot find any other word for this. And now it 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 uh, uh, is about 25 percent of 3G seismic in the revenue. Uh, why it is? It is it's quite interesting. Uh, why, why it happens? So, let's come back to, to my uh, previous picture of the uh, uh, log, electrical log, on, uh, on land electrical log. And now I will make some, uh, uh, some virtual uh, uh, procedure. I will put this uh, uh, log to the sea, uh, sea floor, okay? Uh, the picture is not very, very, very nice because it looks like it is uh, on the on the surface of the sea. But try to imagine th this is the sea, the sea floor, and here is the sea bottom, sub bottom. Okay. So, uh, what is important here? All these high resistivities disappear, or well, most of them, uh, because all porous medium now is saturated with saline water. Therefore, the, the resistivity is low. Uh, so only uh, that, la that porous layer, which is uh, saturated with uh, hydrocarbon, it is still highly resistive. So we have very good contrast between this uh, low resistivity and high resistivity. And in addition, in the stage of, of the uh, geological interpretation, we are not biased, or almost not biased, because we still have some non-porous medium in the seafloor, which would be also uh, highly resistive. But still, you cannot even compare the ambiguity in the on-land interpretation of geoelectric data, data and, uh, and offshore. But what about the resolution? Unfortunately, the resolution, in case of, of the standard uh, surface uh, geoelectrical array, which includes any transmitter, any receiver, I just, uh, it is just schematical, but on the sea surface, and here is the target, the resolution is pretty low, even much lower than the already low resolution on land resolution. And this is because of the very simple fact. We have very conductive environment, sea water, and it is, it is actually screened for, for, uh, uh, for the induced uh, currents to go below this uh, conductive water. One of my students uh, <laughs> formulated this uh, feature of electrical currents, like, uh, how do you say, in, uh, very Israeli men obviously said that uh, when I ask him why it happens, uh, the currents are not fried. They don't want to live very favorable and convenient environment, very uh, low resistivity environment, and to go to high resistivity environment. Anyway, one can see that there is no difference between the uh, a, a background response and the target response. So we cannot actually detect any target uh, using such arrays. But then in 2001, people uh, put uh, the transmitter and the receiver, both electrical dipoles, on the sea floor. <coughs> uh, but it was, it was not enough. If we would, uh, would use the sea floor, it would be definitely better than, than the surface uh, located uh, arrays. 
But if uh, we would continue to use uh, low frequency, uh, 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 low frequency uh, currents, okay, as it, it, as it, uh, it is used uh, when uh, everything is located on the surface, because everything, if everything is located on the surface and we are using high frequency uh, transmitters, then because of the skin depth, all the currents will be just here. Nothing will penetrate to here. No way. But using very low frequency, some current penetrate, and we might have, at least in not very deep sea, at least some resolution. What is it high? What is it low? Uh, OK. So it strongly depends on the, on the conductivity. If we are talking about conductivity of the sea, then uh, high, uh, uh, high uh, frequency is 1 hertz and above. Yeah. Everything is completely different from what you use, of course. Yeah. And uh, below 0 0.1 hertz, it becomes low. And of course, it's, def it's orders of magnitude is different if you are on land in a highly resistive environment. Then we are talking about kilohertz and, and so etc. Et uh, OK. So, uh, but here, uh, in, in 2001, pe people realized that we, if we are using not very low frequencies, as it, as it was common for the, uh, for the surface, yeah. but somehow high frequency, not very high because the signal drops exponentially, the signal will be very low. But at the beginning of the, uh, of the exponential uh, uh, behavior, just at the beginning, then we have very interesting physics of the, of the, uh, um, of the um, uh, propagation of the electromagnetic energy. Look, look at this uh, model, okay? So this is the C, uh, this transmitter, this is uh, uh, the receiver, and uh, the, the signal can uh, propagate from the uh, uh, transmitter to receiver by, uh, by, uh, so, uh, by, by those main paths, through the bottom, uh, uh, going to the, uh, to the uh, surface, through the surface where there is no decay, no exponential decay, exponential decay is op only in conductive medium, or through the uh, sea floor and th through the resistive target. Now, what happens? If we increase the offset, then we have a uh, very, uh, very strong decay of the signal through this path. Zero decay, actually, when R goes to, to infinity, theoretically. If the depth of the sea is uh, much greater than the depth of the target, so we're talking about deep sea uh, exploration, then also all these signals through the, through the water disappears because of the exponential. And we have only the signal traveling through the target. We call this part of the signal uh, a guided wave signal. So the, the signal is uh, guided through, through the target. It is small. Okay, this is small. But compared to all non-informative parts of, of the signal, it, it is big. And this is the result. Uh, okay, these are the conditions. The, the offset is much greater than both than, than both the, the, the C depth and the doubled depth of the target. Okay? Now these are already the first results which were obtained in, in 2001 offshore Angola, where a huge uh, oil uh, field was discovered. Also, there was some seismic surveys, of course, but mainly due to the uh, uh, application of this uh, marine CECM, contra source electromagnetic technique. By the way, uh, it is common in the literature, if you read, uh, the method is called CECM, but it is not entirely true, because all of our methods are CECM. They're use control source, they are electromagnetics. So I would uh, prefer always to add uh, that it, they are frequency domain electromagnetic. Because the rest of the methods are time domain, and uh, I will explain a little bit later. This is frequency domain electromagnetic. Uh, that means that the current in the transmitter uh, uh, varies with time as sinusoidal. Now, uh, about the, these uh, uh, curves, OK? So these are uh, the measured data. They told in uh, offshore Angola, and the the solid lines are the synthetic response for the model representing the oil reservoirs. And you can see huge, huge resolution. This is uh, background. And this is what was uh, measured and calculated. And here is uh, the uh, 
uh, logarithmic scales, so we are talking about orders of magnitude. While in normal conventional surveys, we have, uh, when we have uh, tens of percent uh, uh, target response, then we are happy. Here, orders of magnitude. This is uh, the, uh, the entire reason, along with uh, what I showed you uh, with the resistivities, uh, offshore resistivities, were very a nice contrast and uh, uh, very unique in, uh, geological interpretation. And this resolution made the methods so successful. Until now, I was with conventional method. This CSM frequency, it is not very, very old. It is just uh, 15 years old. But it already became conventional, very widely used method. Now the question arises, if it is so successful, OK, so good, very good resolution, everything is so well, why, why do we need something else? Why will you come here to, to, to give us the lecture about some non-conventional and novel methods? Just because of, of the reason which I already mentioned. So this is all, yeah? These are uh, two reasons. The method simply doesn't work in shallow sea. And we know that we sometimes have very important exploration problem in uh, oil exploration, the so-called transition zone, where seismic doesn't work very well, and where we uh, have to, uh, uh, to delineate the oil field which was discovered on land, and we want to know how it goes below the sea. And of course, in the transition zone, uh, the sea is, is shallow. Okay? So and this method cannot be applied at, at, at all. In addition, as I told, one of the conditions is the huge offsets. The offsets must be five times greater than the, uh, the, than the lateral dimensions of the, of the target. So if we are talking about the uh, oil field of, uh, I don't know, five kilometers, and uh, we are using uh, um, offsets of 15 kilometers, there is no way, because the lateral resolution is not enough. Try to imagine that offsets are five, three, four times greater than the, the, the size of the oil field. And five kilometers is quite a huge oil field. What about the, the smaller oil field? So in case of a shallow sea and small lateral dimensions of the target, the method doesn't work. And we were asked to, to think, we, I, 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 I don't mean myself also, I participated in the development of some method, but we, I mean the community of uh, uh, marine uh, electromagnetic community. We developed some method which fill the gap, which are able to, to work in shallow sea and uh, have, uh, which has, uh, uh, which have the methods uh, have uh, sufficiently high lateral resolution. I will start with the first method, which was indeed uh, developed here in the Ge Geophysical Institute of Israel, developed accidentally. So it was quite interesting story. If I have time, yeah, still have some time, I will tell you the whole story. So the first method is uh, the time domain. Uh, we call it ABPZ. AB means uh, stands for the uh, transmitter, uh, the electrical dipole, and BZ stands for the measured uh, magnetic field, or more uh, precisely for uh, uh, for the time derivative of the uh, magnetic field. But this is coil, okay? So this system uh, we developed in, in the Geophysical Institute, flo flowing, uh, um, floating uh, 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 horizontal electrical dipole on the sea surface, and uh, two coils located on the on the bottom, on both sides of, of the transmitter, on the electrical dipole transmitter. And the method I already mentioned is time domain. Contrary to the previous C frequency domain method, this is the time domain method. And this simply means that the current waveform in the transmitter is not sinusoidal, sinusoidal anymore. It is, it is just a step function. So we have uh, uh, some uh, uh, direct current until some uh, instant. And then it is abruptly changed to zero. And you do to some induction processes, uh, electrical current penetrate to Within the, within the sea, within the sub uh, bottom, and then measuring uh, the response from these car currents with these uh, coils, we get some information. <coughs> uh, but now the question uh, arises uh, what is the resolution, of course? Because, uh, physics is okay, but probably the response from the target is, is still uh, very small. Okay? 
So now uh, I will uh, tell you a few words about the, the hydrogeological problem. Uh, otherwise, it's not clear why why we, did we go to the sea? Don't have uh, some uh, oil reservoirs here, at least shallow oil reservoirs. The hydrogeological uh, problem which we tried uh, uh, tried uh, to uh, to solve uh, uh, started from our own land measurements. We found that uh, at some places uh, along the coastal uh, plain uh, in Israel, in addition to very well known coastal aquifer, this is fresh water which we, we found, which we actually 25 percent of our uh, consumption uh, comes from this coastal coastal aquifer. But below this fresh water, we have seawater intrusion. And we found that at some places below this seawater intrusion, we still have some fresh water because the, the coastal aquifer in Israel is the so multiple aquifer system. It has some uh, clay layers, which you, we cannot see here because of the resolution. But uh, it, uh, it allows uh, the, the um, lighter fresh water to be below uh, uh, heavier uh, seawater. Anyway, you can see that it is quite a big amount. Uh, at least the thickness is quite, quite big. But hydrogeologically, it was very important, this is the shoreline, to understand what, what is going on below the sea. If we want to some, somewhere exploit, so we must uh, to know where it finishes and how it finishes below the sea. Is there any either hydraulic con connection with the sea, etc., etc. Uh, doesn't matter, we were requested to uh, delineate this layer below below the sea. So we have uh, at approximately 100 meter uh, depths, uh, a highly resistive layer with uh, almost 100 uh, meter uh, uh, thickness. So looks not very complicated, but take into account that we are working in the very hand conductive sea and it was not it was completely not clear if we have enough resolution to, to go to this, even not a complicated target. So these are the feasibility study measurements. It's, it's somewhere uh, uh, north to Ashdod, Nitsanim, somewhere here. Okay. So this is transmitter and receivers from both sides. And we got two completely different uh, uh, results. Half of the results included some uh, uh, resistive layer at the depths of uh, which corresponded to the depths of fresh water or on land. Okay. So I will not tell what, what is this. It, it, it's some uh, uh, kind of transformation, strange transformation called the parameter But look at the results of the of the inversion of the interpretation. So here is the target, very clear, more than 10 meters, very good contrast, no doubts. And the half of the measurements did not show any any target. <coughs> so we would expect that those uh, measurements which uh, uh, do show the target. They're located close to the, to the shoreline, and then they are replaced with those which do, doesn't exist, uh, uh, do not uh, exist for the target. But it wasn't the case. Look at this, uh, again, of this location map. All this uh, uh, receiver location, which are drawn in, in uh, red, they did show the target. And those with uh, 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 black, we uh, gave even special names. This is land side means the receiver is located more close to, to land. And this is seaside receiver uh, compared to the transmitter. So this showed, the red shows uh, the uh, fresh water. The black doesn't show. There is no reasonable hydrogeological explanation for such behavior for the, for the water. The salinity cannot change like uh, the skin of zebra. zebra you agree with me. So the only. Uh, uh, the only um, assumption, our assumption, that it is caused by the coastal effect. It is caused by the coastal effect. So then we made, made a, a modeling for uh, the model which uh, doesn't include the cost, and then to uh, the modeling which includes the coastal, uh, the uh, seashore or coastal line. And we got quite interesting results. Look at this, please. So these are the responses which are calculated for both uh, 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 the case with uh, the seashore, including target, doesn't include, uh, which doesn't include the target. Then uh, the response which uh, includes the target and seashore, but the receiver is located on the sea side. Almost no target response. 
but when we calculated the response from the uh, receiver located from the land side, a huge response because the target response because this is uh, again uh, uh, again the uh, logarithmic scale, so we have order of magnitude target target response. So we understood that we actually uh, accidentally found some uh, interesting uh, geophysical phenomena we call it coastal effect on this uh, system and using this uh, coastal effect this is some physical explanation I'm now not in good time uh, and therefore I will escape it if you will ask then uh, I can explain you in more details the current distribution which causes this effect but what is important that uh, if we are talking about 100 meter thick target layer at the depth of 100 meter we could actually get uh, uh, some target response using any method, even DC resistivity method. It would not be, of course, order of magnitude, but our calculation showed 40, 50 percent, which is also detectable. But what about deep targets? So this specific phenomena allows, as you, as you see immediately, even for, for such a quite complicated model, at the depth of uh, 1.5 kilometers, we have only 100 meters a thick target. This is good target even for seismic <laughs> resolution. And here we have this is the resolution. Uh, this is background response and this is the uh, response with the target and we, we can see again uh, in the logarithmic scale, scale quite a good resolution. So this method can be applied also for a deep target. So then the question arises why, why do we need something else? Because the method is very simple. The equipment is standard. Uh, it is not very technological because co contrary to, to the previous CSA method, which can be uh, very easily uh, uh, floating or, or towed by, by the ship, here we, we uh, can only perform point measurements and then to move system to another place so it, it is less technological but still it is quite cheap and, and good method and if we, we can uh, use it uh, for deep uh, uh, oil target then everything is fine but look please at this for uh, pictures they show how dramatically this coastal effect uh, decreases and then disappears with the distance from the seashore so actually, at the depth, uh, 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 a distance of 1.5 kilometers, we have very small response, and at two kilometers, it disappears at all. So it, this method is essentially near shoreline. But we know that transition zone is not two kilometers. Sometimes we need to go to 10 kilometers, uh, and even more. And and uh, there is wide spot. CCM doesn't work when the, uh, the depth of the sea less than, than, than one kilometer, okay? This doesn't work when we are uh, more remote than, than two kilometers. So we have quite a big uh, uh, part of the sea which is not covered by any existing high resolution technique. So we went, okay, these are conclusions, I, I will repeat whatever I said. So now we are going to two completely new methods some of which, uh, the results of some, some of which are, are, are only uh, submitted to, to the publication and you can see here and to, to read anywhere. But this specific method, the first one, uh, which includes vertical electrical diapers, so vertical electrical lines, wet or well uh, uh, correspondingly, they are already used even in some feasibility study uh, in the North, North uh, Sea by Norwegian uh, uh, company Petra Marker, it is called. Now, so it includes, uh, as I already told, not horizontal dipole, a vertical dipole, and it <coughs> works with the time domain method. Same uh, uh, current waveform step function. This means that we can use uh, short offsets. Because when you switch off the, uh, the transmitter current, there is no uh, current in, in your transmitter, and therefore, the position of the receiver doesn't play any role. So you don't have to go very far away from the transmitter. And therefore, if you have uh, the so-called short of, of system, you can expect good lateral resolution. So this was one of the first reasons of using this 
uh, uh, this array. And the second was that contrary to a, a horizontal electrical dipole, where, where the current distribution is mainly horizontal, and therefore the influence of thin resistive layer should be uh, relatively low, in this vertical electrical dipoles or lines, the current distribution, I will show you immediately the, the, the correct one, but now like, it, it, is, it is like this. Therefore, one might expect uh, good resolution for thin uh, resistive targets. But, of course, this method can be applied only in C. You cannot, oh, practically cannot use it in, uh, on land. Because, you know, uh, on land, you, you can put it in, into some boreholes, but where to put measurement, you need a lot of boreholes. This method is not for, for online exploration, also probably sometimes people are using the existing boreholes to put it, it there. And the second problem is, is very high sensitivity to non-verticality. If uh, this vertical line, even a little bit non-vertical, then immediately appears, <coughs> appears horizontal uh, component, which is much, much uh, larger than the vertical one, and then you get uh, some artifacts. And therefore, our second, this is not our, but the second is our method, was the so-called horizontal analog of vertical electrical type, <coughs> and we call it a circle uh, electrical type. This system, which is completely analogical to the previous one, both mathematically and physically, I will show you the Matrix, I will not show, but you, you, you can see it is exactly the same equations, exactly the same boundary conditions, exactly the same analytical solutions in, in, in simple models. Uh, but uh, it includes central electrode and theoretically continuum of electrodes uh, along the circle. Therefore, it is called circle electrical diode. In practice, in practice, we cannot uh, provide a continuum, so we uh, put several electrodes, and we cal uh, calculations and some ex already experience online experience shows that it is enough eight electrodes symmetrically located eight electrodes. Then uh, the such system is completely analogical to vertical electrical diode, <coughs> but it can be used horizontally, and it. Ah, no, I would also emphasize one more uh, <coughs> feature of this, uh, uh, of this uh, special CED transmitter. Uh, in practice, uh, we are using uh, the uh, sizes of this transmitter re radius about one kilometer. So the remote electrodes can be two kilometers apart. Now try to imagine how the contact resistances can change in these two kilometers. I showed you the, the changes of resistivity in few meters. So they can be orders of magnitude different. But we need ex uh, uh, strictly uh, equal currents in all, all legs of this uh, tr transmitter type. This put uh, extremely high requirements to, to some uh, uh, stabilization uh, current system, and this makes uh, this uh, uh, method very uh, very expensive, very cumbersome. It is very difficult to to uh, lay down this this transmitter. It takes two three days, and then relocate. It is I don't know in English it is sealed. You probably know or at least tra tra translate. Uh, in the sea, the situation with grounding electrodes is much better because this environment is higher, highly homogeneous, uh, electrically homogeneous, but uh, the other problem of relocating is even more severe than, than uh, online. Can you imagine how to move this uh, spider with uh, uh, one kilometer legs from one place to, to the other? Very difficult. Uh, okay, Th this uh, is, uh, uh, yeah, okay, this I, I showed the, the ideal uh, circle electrical type, of the, this is the real, and this is current uh, system. Toroidal car system, no, it's not there. But here is, uh, as I promised you, to show you the physical uh, analogy between uh, vertical, elect vertical electrical dipole and circle electrical dipole. You, you can see that, that the current system are very similar and uh, almost uh, identical. And as I told you, uh, mathematical solution is also identical in, in one d case. Now, <coughs> I would like to show you the vertical resolution of both methods, they're, they're very similar, okay? So please, this is absolutely amazing and uncommon for electrical methods uh, numbers. 
10 meters layer at the depth of kilometers. <laughs> it's, but you can see that they are uh, resolved uh, quite well. So this is uh, the uh, background, this is the response with the target. And even they are resolved quite well when you consider two different layers. For example, this is oil layer and this is some, uh, some angiotrite or some, some other iron resistive layer. So this is very promising, uh, at least theoretically, very promising uh, method from the resolution point of view. <coughs> now, and, and even more so, it, is, it has very, quite, uh, very high sensitivity to the resistivity of the, of the target, which is, is not common in, uh, in standard, in uh, conventional electromagnetic methods at all. We are happy when we can distinguish between low resistivity, uh, uh, medium resistivity, and high resistivity. But here, it is also a log log logarithmic scale. You can see that the signal is resolved uh, towards the resistivity very well. Okay? Now, what about lateral, lateral resolution? This is very interesting. So, I, I will start. This is a standard CCM, frequency domain CCM, which is already 12 years, uh, is used in practice. <coughs> but the, the offset range uh, here is quite large in order to, to get the target, as, a, as I told you. This is long offset method. So, what can we see? The depth to the target, and the, the C depth is uh, one kilometer is, 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 in this specific uh, model, and the depth to the target also one kilometer. There is no way to, to detect the target less than three kilometers diameter. Even three kilometers with the noisy, <coughs> noisy uh, measurements, I'm not sure it is, it's possible. But let's say three kilometers, so three times uh, uh, more than, than uh, depth to the, de depth to the target. But but the, the response itself, look, they look similar. So if you will try to interpret, there will be huge ambiguity in detecting the depths and the lateral dimensions. Nothing specific uh, is for the, uh, for the contour, for the uh, edges of, of this uh, body. Now let us see uh, our non-conventional novel technique, uh, vertical electrical dipole here and, and circle electrical. So uh, the target is, is the same. Here it is not the sandwich. It's just the different sizes of, of the target for different responses. So I, I didn't know how to, to, to show them at, at the same depth. But they're OK, the same depth but deep with different radius, OK? Uh, with different radius. So this is vertical electrical dipole. Please, look. Here, the response here is already enough. Uh, to get it even uh, a little bit smaller, we will uh, definitely see. So the, the uh, it is uh, 1800 meters. So I think that 1.5 kilometers uh, is enough to detect. But here the situation is even much uh, uh, better in C in circle electric diagram. 900 by 900 meters, so it is uh, is much smaller than uh, smaller than the the, the depth, it's smaller than. The, uh, you can uh, uh, detect uh, with, uh, with CED. And what is most important, in uh, VED, you can definitely find the, uh, the edges. No interpretation is needed. Go with the profiling, and you will see, not theoretically, of course, you will see the uh, uh, edges of, of, the, of the body. And here, it, it, this is here even better. You have maxima above the uh, of the edge. So lateral resolution of CED and VED is much, much, is much, much better. Yeah, no, no arguments. <laughs> the situation is even more dramatic in shallow sea. Uh, the standard uh, CCM, frequency domain CCM, doesn't have any resolution because of, uh, I explained, the airway uh, effect. But here we have the same and even a little bit better, a little, a little bit higher uh, target response. Uh, so what did I want? Why should I uh, go? Ah, okay. I just to sh uh, wanted to show the existing uh, onlet CD system. How cumbersome it! Uh, this is only one electrode. We cannot use uh, only one stick because uh, huge uh, uh, contact resistance, uh, onlet contact resistance, and we need some hundreds of amps to uh, to inject into the ground. Therefore, we are using many sticks for one. Uh, so. It takes from two, three days up to the week, one week, to uh, install only one, uh, uh, only one CD in, in on land. 
Okay, and uh, offshore, as I told you, it is no problem with the uh, with the grounding, but huge problem with relocating. And now I, I would like to show you. So we have everything is good in CED beside the very cumbersome uh, transmitting and uh, the impossibility to move it from one point to the other. But now we found some very, very interesting application for CED, and I'll show you immediately. And this is putting it on the, uh, on the uh, ice flow, on drifting ice flow in high uh, latitude Arctic uh, regions. So this, I would say, the ideal platform for CED, because it combines the stability of on land, the uh, very homogeneous and easy uh, grounding, because it is below ice within the sea, and it is moving, it is free. It is free, okay? So it somehow, yeah, it was already reported in, in, in one uh, meeting, and we were asked, okay, so it, it reminds like, uh, look for, for a coin below this, uh, the street line. Like, but it is not exactly the case because we were asked to find some solution for uh, exploring high latitude Arctic regions covered by permanent ice because no other uh, uh, control source, uh, electrical, electro electromagnetic methods, and even seismic methods, can efficiently work below the below the, the permanent ice. They work somewhere in in uh, summer time in the shelf where there is no uh, permanent. Thick ice, but here the thicker ice, the better for this method, and this is the only method actually. Uh, as, and, uh, as you can see, this uh, picture is taken in, in July 2012. So, because of, uh, of global warming, we have smaller uh, uh, polar uh, head, but it is still quite huge. So we must be in a hurry to apply this method because in the next decade probably it will be as small as, as, as this one. And now I would like to show you uh, what is the is the uh, is the uh, path this uh, uh, floating this uh, drifting flows uh, are uh, doing in in, in these uh, latitudes. Uh, this is the path of one of the Russian uh, polar station. Uh, SP-80, it is called uh, 1062, it seems to me, something. Uh, and it, it is, uh, the, the, the line distance here is 3,000.5 uh, kilom kilometers. So, if to take the average in many years, it is, is between 1.1500 uh, 1, to uh, 5,000 kilometers per year. So, it is quite huge. Uh, profile and taking into account that there is absolutely no information about uh, high, high resolution information about uh, sea floor below the uh, below the uh, Arctic uh, uh, Ocean. Uh, I mean high high latitude uh, high ocean. I think uh, the application of this method is quite a nice future. Okay, I, I finished. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, any questions, please? <coughs> yeah. About the, the, the shore effect that you mentioned, how is it affected by the, the, the shore gradient? If the descent is steep or... or if you mean the, the, the very first uh, method, yes? Mm -hmm. yeah. ah, okay. It is affected very, very much. So, I, uh, the, the numbers I show, uh, I show you it, 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 that were taken for the specific uh, uh, topography or, or bathymetry of, of our shoreline, and even more so our shoreline where we found this fresh water between north of Ashdod to north uh, Tel Aviv. Okay, uh, in uh, if it is sharper, then we have uh, quite different uh, uh, numbers. The effect exists, but for example, now it is under the investigation. For example, if it is sharp, then the, the seaside can be better than the, the, than the land side. Yeah. But uh, <coughs> yeah, qualitatively, the effect exists, and, and since we are able to measure this basin, it is not unknown. Yes. So we can plan <coughs> our survey design accordingly. Other questions, please? 
Okay, uh, thank you very much.